Hi everyone, my name is Shreyanan. I am a data scientist with AI Center of Excellence at Red Hat. Today I'll be talking about uh, encoding categorical variables. So I'll give you a brief introduction about the problem statement and then I'll take you to a notebook that illustrates all these categorical encoding techniques that you can play with. And then uh, finally I'll talk about how you can use this project and how you can contribute back. So let's dive into the problem statement here. All right, so um, a lot of times when you're solving a machine learning problem, uh, specifically in, a, in an enterprise setting, you often encounter variables that are categorical in nature or in other words are strings and not numbers and dealing with these variables is a little challenging because uh, machine learning models and statistical models don't really understand strings they understand numbers and if you want to find patterns and if you want to learn from your data then it becomes essential that you find uh, meaningful representation of these strings. Now, if you have target variables or if you have labels in your data, then this problem is still manageable because you can use these targets and labels to find embeddings of your categorical variables. But in case of unsupervised problems, you don't have that support. And that's what the focus of this work is. So, um, we look at all the methods that are present in the literature and then we try to see which methods work best in which situation. So broadly there are two types, n-base encoders and character or word-base encoders. And uh, in the notebook I'm going to show you um, how you can use these encoders and then also we uh, try to apply this to a problem and see the results. So let's go to the notebook environment. This is a Jupyter Hub instance uh, that is running on mass open cloud. Um, we have getting started videos for how to sign in and how to get your container running. Uh, once you have that and you select the categorical encoding image, you will reach this uh, page and you will have the categorical encoding directory where you go to the notebook section and then you click on the demo notebook. So this demo notebook has all the categorical encoding techniques and all the dependencies are already installed so we can just start running the cells. So um, the data that we are using for this demo is uh, for a simple binary classification problem. The X column here is a bunch of employee titles and the Y column here is uh, the remuneration class. Or what that means is that if this employee title earns greater than 100,000 or not. So if it does, then it's true, otherwise it's false. So uh, what we'll try to do is that we'll um, take this data set and apply different encoding methods and try to see which one performs better. And for performance metric, we are using F1 scores. Um, so let's just go into the following cells. So we split it into training and test data set. And then in this method, uh, I define a pipeline which takes in the encoder, calls the machine learning model, and then returns the uh, accuracy result. So um, yeah, let's let me just give you an example of how you can use this. So we have the column encoder class. And we can just put, for example, binary encoder into this. And we can just 
put this into the experiments method this returns three things we are only interested in the report we can call this uh, we can also print the report it's gonna take a while because it's um, encoding it and learning the machine learning model and then also printing the results so that's uh, gonna be a second we can move ahead until this happens so in the following cells i have all the encoders listed and i'm basically doing the same thing i'm calling the experiments method for each of these encoders and i'm also discussing first how this encoder is working and then also pros and cons associated with it so for example integer encoding is a really basic method it's easy to implement and use but then usually it's a poor choice because it adds random ordinality um, similarly i have uh, listed all these encoders um, yeah and then also uh, the accuracy scores for these methods so uh, let's move on to the, some of the results that we see here um, so like I discussed there were two types there were uh, n base encoders and then there were word based encoders and here we see that the word based encoders the last three ones perform slightly better than the n base encoders and that makes sense because uh, uh, the word based encoders use the information in uh, that's present in the string of the variables so if um, if the columns in your data set have uh, strings that uh, have some meaning then word based encoders can outperform the n based encoders also um, one of the methods that we explored here is online gamma poison factorization which uh, is explained in this paper that i've linked and it offers a way to interpret your encoded vector which comes in very handy when you're trying to interpret the decisions given by the model so you can go into the details of each of these methods and look at the resources linked uh, and then uh, look at the conclusion of this report and see which method works best for your use case so uh, that's this project in brief uh, I think the example that we did would have finished by now right so um, here this is it will show you how your encoder has performed and it will give you the f1 score the accuracy um, and support and everything you can change this to one hot encoder and then just keep playing with it so uh, that's about it uh, let's come back to the blog for a second so at the end uh, apart from all the references and um, resources i've also linked um, the repository so this is the public repository for this project you can create issues here and you can open prs and then um, I'll respond to them. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to shun at the rate um, And yeah, thank you.